Hi, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. Today's episode I'm really excited about because Dr. Trinka, and I'll get more into it in the episode, but he's been so pivotal in my own health and my own wellness. And I was looking for a naturopathic doctor and I found Dr. Trinka and I want to read his official bio and then we will bring him on. So Dr. Terry Trinka is a neurological optometrist and certified nutritionist specializing in helping people with both vision and health problems. As an eye doctor, his in-depth testing therapies, specialized glasses, improve your ability to read, comprehend, and he also addresses improving your balance, spatial, and auditory awareness. And as a nutritionist, he uses comprehensive testing to best determine lifestyle and nutritional protocols, not only to help your vision and brain, but also to help you reverse diabetes, improve brain function, overcome depression and thyroid concerns, And he's known for his personalized detox programs. His website, iBrainConnection.com, explains in detail the work he does and how you can schedule a free consultation with him. He does Skype, email, and phone consults with people all over the country. And I actually found him while I was researching um, naturopathic uh, approaches to adrenal issues because I was having some major adrenal issues. And I'll get more into my story. But since I found Dr. Trinka, my uh, husband now goes to him. My mother now goes to him. So we've had all sorts of, and a few of my friends as well. Uh, it's been an amazing experience, and I can't wait to, to bring him on. So let's get started. All right. Welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. I am so glad you're here. In this episode, I'm doing something totally new. As you can tell, I'm actually here in person with Dr. Trinka. Welcome, Dr. Trinka. Glad to be here. It's so awesome. <laughs> so um, just briefly, I'd like to tell sort of how I found Dr. Trinka. So It was about a year after I stopped drinking that I realized that I could probably start getting off the antidepressants that I'd been on for almost 17 years, and I was finally feeling emotionally stable enough to at least have a try, like at least see what could be out there, but I didn't necessarily want to do it on my own. I also wanted to do it with, you know, help and support, so I got off most of them with the medical doctor that prescribed them. But then when things would come up and I didn't know how to deal with anxiety without Xanax or something like that, I reached out to Dr. Trinka to talk more about, okay, let's do a really holistic approach to, you know, my, my emotional well-being and stuff. And so it's been amazing. So um, actually, we just had a consultation earlier today and Dr. Trinka asked me, he said, so it was like almost two years ago that you're in my office for anxiety and depression. Now we're talking about nutritional things. And where are you with the anxiety and depression? And I'm just like, oh, it's, it's just it's just gone. Like, I'm a happy girl, which That's is great. just really amazing. And so I, th- I think I owe a lot of that to you. Thank you very much. Oh, I think you did the heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the questions I get asked all the time by readers, by people who email in from the podcast, is when you are detoxing from alcohol or when you're taking a break, what sort of supplements, what sort of nutritional support should you put in place to make that process not only painless, but just an actually enjoyable process? And so I've asked Dr. Trinka to kind of come up with a list of some of his best recommendations because he's someone I trust very, very much. And, you know, one of my favorite things about Dr. Trinka is that instead of just giving you a list of recommendations, us sending you to, okay, you know, get this on whatever site or whatever, he actually is wonderful at providing an education Thank you, Annie. behind why these things work. So what, what it actually does in the body, why it works. So um, I know you did a lot of research on this. And... I did. It was a deep dive. It was a deep dive into how to help a person who's made the choice that you made. And I think ultimately you have to talk about food first. Um, Supplements are great and they're in many ways more powerful than food, but you still have to talk about food because it's something that you're going to do every day for the rest of your life, hopefully. Um, And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to handle some of the really basic things that happen when a person has been drinking for a while and makes the choice, the makes a different choice in their life. And so the, the first thing that I want to say about food is um, I'm way more analytical about food than most people. And so people just want to eat what tastes good, and I get all that. But I also think that if you just think about it in a very structured way, at least for a little bit in your life, then you don't have to think more about it, which I think is great. Um, And what I'd like to tell people is um, I always talk to my clients in food, about food in this way. Um, Quality first, the effect on blood sugar, 
And then finally, how does your immune system react with the food? And I think all three are powerful. When it comes to um, alcohol and nutrition, I'm fairly certain that um, blood sugar takes probably the precedence. Well, not to say that the other two are important. Quality is enormous. So the quality of food is a critical piece because, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but food in America is a mess. And um, it's, it's one of the areas that I think you can make the biggest difference in your life if you start to c concentrate on quality. And the lie that big corporations have sold Americans is food is cheap and it's easy. And it's neither of those things. You have to put money into it and it's an effort into preparing so that you have the right quality of things that rebuild your body. I also think that it ultimately, and this is a trite saying, but it also comes down to, are you going to pay the farmer or are you going to pay the doctor? And I choose the farmer, mm -hmm. and which means, and so practically it means choose organic when you can. Um, not everybody can afford organic all the time. I get that. And organic is more expensive. But remember the doctor farmer analogy. And it, it, it helps me when I look at the price of something and I'm like, holy moly, that's more expensive than I wanted to pay. But I think it's worth it in the long run. So buy organic. It's also useful if you know something about the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. This was put out by the Environmental Working Group, one of my favorite nonprofit groups. And they have a list of foods that you must buy organic, and then a list of foods that would be okay if you can't find good quality organic or you just don't have the, the funds for it. Um, for instance, potatoes and lettuce and all berries are you must buy organic because they're so susceptible to having pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides in the food. And so this is the hard part about this whole thing. And that is you don't feel it and you don't taste it. It's the cumulative effect that hurts the glands in your body. Um, and I think that's the key point to make. Some of the ones that are not so critical to have organic are thicker skinned things like some of the squashes and um, avocados. So. Go Google the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, and it'll help you um, in trying to get this first part of food taken care of, which is quality. The second thing I talk to people about frequently is the effect that food has on blood sugar. And this is critical because people who have issues with alcohol tend to almost, to the person, be hypoglycemic. Fancy word for saying your blood I sugars. Was. Yep. And 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 I think I was hypoglycemic from the get go, um, before I even knew what alcohol was. And so I've been very aware of what hypoglycemia is. It's interesting. One of the things that I was taught is that you can tell if you're hypoglycemic by how you feel when you eat food. Do you feel better? You're probably hypoglycemic. Do you feel tired or crave sweets? you're probably hyperglycemic on the road to diabetes. And so um, it, it's interesting. Just, I mean, the, the obvious answer is you shouldn't have any change in energy or feeling. You should just feel full. That's, that's the gig with food. So hypoglycemia is a big deal. And one of the things that alcohol does to a person's body is act like a, it's act like sugar. It's a refined carbohydrate. So you'll see your blood sugar go up and then crash. And um, it's very typical. There's, there's characteristics of people that have hypoglycemia. Um, one of them is that you don't want to eat breakfast. And one of the reasons that you don't want to eat breakfast is because your blood sugar is so low that this little gland on top of your kidneys called your adrenal glands starts to crank out cortisol which 
will help your blood sugar, but it also puts you into a fight or flight situation. So do you feel like eating when you're running away or about to fight? Of course not. Um, and so you have this, like, I don't even want to think about food right now when people get up. Um, and so that's really a common characteristic. In addition to this um, food makes me feel better. When I eat, I feel better. So eating protein in the morning is a critical, it's, I've read so much on this, so many people that are so much smarter than me that say, if you're going to help people who are trying to recover from drinking too much, then make sure that they eat small amounts of protein, especially in the morning, but at snacks and meals throughout the day. Um, I think that this is one of the probably the most critical things I can say in the, in the three things that are about food. The other thing um, about food is what is the effect of the food on your immune system? So not, I mean, you can have the most perfect food quality. It's super organic and blessed by monks and um, it, it's stay, stay steady for your blood sugar. It's not an advanced carbo um, or a refined carbohydrate and still um, you could be having problems with that food. And we find this is definitely true with, especially with people who have issues with um, alcohol consumption. And they often have many food allergies. So it's about the inflammation that occurs after they eat a food, even though it's good for their blood sugar and even though it's high quality, if their immune system says, uh, I don't like you, um, it's going to further um, deteriorate their body. And so, um, and it also is going to lead to hypoglycemia and you're going to, and, and, and people are going to want to grab um, quick energy fixes, which is exactly the wrong thing to do when you're um, trying to recover from alcohol. If, if you've ever noticed, um, and maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't, um, but I've known people that have been in AA and guess what they have at the, uh, guess what kind of foods they have? Donuts and coffee and sugar, because it's the quick hit. It's exactly what people who are trying to recover from alcohol um, want, but it's exactly what they don't need because it acts like alcohol. And so these three things of quality, of um, blood sugar, and of your immune system's reactivity to that are critical in looking at food. And how can you tell if your immune system is reacting to a certain food? It's, uh, what a great question. Um, sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's just like, until you have some deterioration of some part of your body, you have, um, you end up with an autoimmune disease. Um, so often it's useful to get somebody to run tests that would say, um, why don't we test your blood to see if the antibodies in your blood are elevated against certain foods? And the most common foods are gluten, dairy, soy, um, and corn. Those are your really big ones. There's other ones because you're a unique individual. And as a unique individual, you, you can have any kind of food that your body can react to. One of the things that we had talked about earlier, Annie, was um, that... If a person has a very permeable gut, then they're more likely to have food sensitivities. So if, um, this is a, um, a term that most medical doctors sort of cringe at when they hear it. But more and more, the, the more I read in the scientific literature, the more it's, it's definitely a condition. And that is leaky gut, which is, of course, intestinal permeability. So if you've got food particles leaking out into your bloodstream before they get digested, then it sets up a condition where your body's immune system will react much greater to that than if you had normal digestive process and if you had the food broken down into its tiny little component parts, and you had a gut that was intact. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So um, the supplements that I would recommend for a person that's going to embark on the adventure of no alcohol, and by the way, I've been listening to a number of the podcasts, and I'm just so impressed with the people on them. So impressed. Um, the fact that they... 
figured out that something was not right in their life and are taking the action to fix it. It just, it's, 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 it's very impressive. And, and I, I, I want to, I want to thank you for turning me on to the Naked Mind podcast because now it's, it's a part of my weekly routine and I, I get a lot out of it. Um, it's, there's a lot about psychology and emotions that I, I learn a ton about when I listen. So thank you for all the people that have been on the, on the podcast because you're helping me to be educated about it. Um, so in the supplement area, I think that there's three things that are critical. There's, there's 20 things that are critical, but I mean, it's not real to talk about 20 things. It's real to talk about three. Um, and so the three things that I think would be most important would be something to help with blood sugar and adrenals, because if there's an, a, a blood sugar problem, one of the things that's crucial in your hormone system is this little gland that sits on top of your kidneys called the adrenals, and they modulate blood sugar in your body. And when you have problems with blood sugar, you're going to have problems with your adrenals, and your adrenals modulate stress in your body. And so I don't know too many people in this time that don't have some level of stress. And I like to call them stressors, not just stress, because it implies that there are very many things that can affect your adrenal glands, food being one of them. And alcohol is a type of food. It's a refined carbohydrate, and it has impacts on your body system, depending on the amount and the length and all the rest of that stuff. So there is a um, I want to make a key point here, and that is I use supplements from a lot of different companies. I don't, so many practitioners that are in the alternative or functional medicine space use one company, and that's the holy company. And I find that there are wonderful things about many companies. I probably represent six, seven, eight companies which I think serves my client base the best. So I thought about this and I thought about the reality of people maybe wanting to get supplements and me providing a mechanism for that. And I thought, given that, I'm gonna stick with one company on this. So I just wanted to give you a, a heads up that um, there are some really great companies out there and this is just one of the really great companies. What makes a really great company? Well, I think that a really great company tests the materials that comes into their lab for purity, for contamination, for, for other stuff that's in there that shouldn't be, and makes the product, and then does it all over again after the product's made to make sure that it has purity, and it, it is what it's supposed to be. So if you have... And correct me if I'm wrong, but supplements in the United States especially, and I'm sure globally can be a massive scam. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so that's why this is worth talking about in the first place, if you're not familiar with taking supplements at all, is that most of what you're going to see on the shelf or most of what you're going to see in infomercials, it, you have no idea what you're actually getting. As a result of it being somewhat unregulated, um, it's up to the people to provide, um, who are manufacturing the supplements, to provide the highest quality possible. That's not cheap. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit, and when we talk about B vitamins, there's really cheap ways to make B vitamins, and there's really expensive ways to make them that are activated, so your body knows what to do with them, so that they don't have to do things to the B vitamins to make them work. Mostly, well, I'll just talk about it right now, mostly in B vitamins, and B vitamins are critical for people who are wanting to change their life um, relative to alcohol. So um, there's a concept called phosphorylation. That's a biochemistry concept. And if, if you look at B vitamins that are the best made on the market, Annie, the ones that are best made are phosphorylated, which means they have the word phos in it somewhere. Um, maybe with the exception of B1, which is thiamine which the best ones are called co-carboxylase instead of thiamine hydrochloride or thiamine mononitrate. But if you look at riboflavin um, uh, B2, it's riboflavin 5-phosphate. If you look at B6, which is pyridoxine, 
pyridoxine by phosphate. These are the active forms of the B vitamins that people people's bodies know what what it is. They know and exactly. You educated me on this when we were talking for me personally about folate because without it actually being activated your body just doesn't right. process it it goes right through so this is another there's two problems with the supplement whole supplement in general is one it's unregulated so you don't always know the quality and then two if it's not actually an activated supplement you take it and let's be frank you pee it out right and like exactly. it does not do any good for your body so i think these are really important things i do i do too um relative to b9 um folate um Folic acid has been shown to be somewhat harmful to people. And so don't take folic acid. Take um, methyl tetrahydrofolate or calcium folinate or something that doesn't say folic acid. Um, so that's just a brief thing on, on the supplements that I would, or the supplement that I would use for blood sugar control and for adrenal health. Oftentimes, you'll see a little bit of adrenal tissue in the supplement itself to give you a little adrenal help. I think that that's very useful. Obviously, if you have, if you're a vegan, this is probably not for you. And I'm just giving you a heads up, um, which is okay. Um, so that's number one. So supplement number one is for adrenal health and blood sugar. Blood and sugar, it's... and especially for hypoglycemics. So when do people get hypoglycemic, Annie? After meal or in between meals? Um, in between meals. Absolutely. <laughs> and so their blood sugar drops like a stone. And that's when you want to take the supplement. So typically I would recommend a couple of these in between breakfast and lunch, in between lunch and dinner. This is assuming that you're buying the fact that you should keep your blood sugar steady. Um, and so many, many times just eating regularly is not going to cut it. You need a little additional help. Maybe two, three months, um, and then then your eating, your normal eating habit should should kick in. Um, but I think it's very difficult because there's so many depletions and there's so many issues as a result of um, alcohol on a consistent basis over a long period of time that you can't just eat right and say that's it, I'm done. Um, supplements are really useful at least initially. So. Do you have any questions on, on the blood sugar adrenal thing? Um, what is that supplement called? Um, it's uh, called Bioglycosine Forte, and it's generally dosed in between meals at about at two capsules. So you're taking four to six a day, depending on when you eat. Um, wonderful, wonderful supplement. I've seen great results with it whenever I've used it. So that's supplement number one. The second supplement relates to the most common amino acid in the body. So the most common amino acid in the body is glutamine. Glutamine has phenomenal effects in your body. Phenomenal. For one, it's the number one nourishment of the internal lining of the cells of your intestine. Those cells have a name. They're called enterocytes. You can't can't let you get away without giving some medical term. Um, uh, so they're called enterocytes, and their preferred fuel is L-glutamine. Well, if you're trying to heal a leaky gut, and there are tons of other things available for healing a leaky gut other than L-glutamine, but L-glutamine is at the top of all of them. And so you look at any formula, and it's going to have L-glutamine in it. So L-glutamine does a number of things. helps your immune system as well. It helps heal a leaky gut because alcohol will create a leaky gut. And there's huge downstream effects from a leaky gut, um, including inflammation, the setup of autoimmunity. So you, you take it from me, you don't want a leaky gut. Um, and the best way to tell is a lab test that will tell you that. So L-glutamine, um, not only does it but help... Yes? Alcohol being the nature that alcohol is has a tendency to punch holes in your gut. Absolutely. So um, not only, yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly so. So um, the biggest reason for leaky guts is usually um, something in the food arena or the drink arena and something in the microbial world. Those are the two um, biggest reasons for intestinal permeability. Um, so L-glutamine has other phenomenal effects on your brain. And this is what I am super interested in. Um, 
So the biggest neurotransmitter that helps people feel calm is... GABA. Yes. <laughs> Go to the head of the class. <laughs> uh, so GABA is... Um, it's very unusual because GABA is such a big molecule... You can't take GABA. You can't go buy GABA. And it's so funny because it's such a popular supplement. And I, and, and I always kind of look at that and go, GABA can't get into the brain because it's a huge molecule and the pores of the blood-brain barrier are small. So what are we doing here? <laughs> Who's uh, profiting on this? And nonsense? so <laughs> what, what that, well, that's part of it. But the other part of it is, is that it suggests that the blood-brain barrier is leaky mm. and it's not intact. And if you can get GABA, preformed GABA, into your brain and feel good, I am kind of raising an eyebrow at you and saying, I'm wondering if the uh, integrity of your blood brain barrier is great. That's not such a great thing because you don't want to let a lot of things into your brain that don't belong there. Mm. So L glutamine, which is a small molecule, can get right into the brain and along with other components, will make GABA, which is your primary inhibitory neuro neurotransmitter, which is a fancy way to say that it calms you down. By the way, there's a new generation of products that are called liposomal, and they're these little tiny spheres that are so small that they will wrap some GABA in it, and that does penetrate the blood-brain barrier. So there's a way to get GABA into your brain without relying on all of the things that have to happen to preform GABA from its component parts and then make it in your brain. Which one of the things that's really important about GABA production is normal blood sugar. So this is one of the reasons why you don't, if you're hypoglycemic, it's very common to see anxiety and it's also common to see depression. Um, and so one of the reasons is, is you can't take all the elements of GABA and just stuff it in your brain to make GABA. So I, I thought that was really interesting. Um, so L-glutamine is, is enormously helpful for people that are trying to um, make a choice for low or no alcohol in their life, especially if they've had a lot before. It makes a ton of sense. Helps gut and helps brain. One of the things that I found when I was doing this dive into nutrition and alcohol was that most people that have a problem with alcohol any have a problem with the metabolism of a certain fat. And you've heard of the, the terms omega-3 and omega-6s, right? Well, I mean, it's pretty common. So in the metabolism of omega-6 fats, there exists some compounds that are made that have a funny name and they're called icosanoids. And icosanoids are these little chemicals that have their cell messengers, their cell signalers. And they're enormously powerful in your body. And there's some good ones and there's some bad ones, quote unquote. I don't think really it's good or bad. I think that they just do different things. Ones are associated with inflammation and shutting your blood vessels down and making them constricted. And, and so those are called bad ones. But honestly, those are good if you have a cut. You know, if you get injured, though, you want those. So they're not bad. Um, but the ones that are associated with good mood, good feeling, blood flow, um, those are a certain class of icosanoids called prostaglandin E1. And what I found out was is that most people who have a problem with alcohol have a problem manufacturing PGE1. Mm. And so guess what alcohol does? Provides a temporary boost to PGE1. Wow. And so it gives people this hit of feel good and also they have their blood sugar gets all raised and so I mean it feels good for a reason. Um, physiologically. And I've also heard that alcohol, um, in my research, it provides a temporary boost to GABA. GABA, um, yes, and dopamine, um, which is uh, your, your pleasure neurotransmitter. So all of those things are, um, 
are great reasons if you want to feel better momentarily and not think about consequences. All of those things are great um, for alcohol consumption. The problem is, is that the downstream consequences are significant, significant. Um, and one, I, I've read one study that said that 75% of alcohol, people are trying to get rid of alcohol in their lives. 75% of them are helped enormously by looking at blood sugar and by looking at PGE1. Um, just those two things. Wow. Uh, and so um, there is a, a compound that is metabolized in the omega-6 fatty acid pathway. I know that's a lot of biochemistry. I apologize. <laughs> um, there's, uh, it's true, though, and it's called GLA, gamma linoleic acid. And GLA is where PGA, PG1 is manufactured from. And so most people with issues with alcohol have, are really lacking this enzyme that makes um, uh, GLA. And so if you just give GLA, and this is my third supplement, if you give GLA in a high quality form to a person, they can make PGE1. And if they make PGE1, they feel better. And that's really, that's really part of the name of the game of living is to try to feel better, and especially through natural means, right? Absolutely. That's huge. So to summarize, um, the top three, although we could recommend many, things all many. day long, <laughs> yeah. but the top three, and what I really asked Dr. Trinka to do on here was because I get asked this all the time to not only come up with top three that you could go get, but also we're going to give you a web page no affiliate, I'm not an affiliate at all, but just a web page where you can actually order these um, on Dr. Trinko's website. And then equally, if, if somebody wanted to do, uh, well, first let's do this summary. The top three, first one is to regulate blood sugar and adrenals. And I know for me, my adrenals were so messed up that I was waking up in the mornings feeling like literal panic attacks. And we actually tested my cortisol levels in the mornings and it was off the charts. It was crazy. And that took, you know, work to come back down. Um, second is L-glutamine and that is just helping your brain protect itself and, and re kind of, um, regenerate your gut so that you're not, you know, all exactly. the damage that has been done to your gut and that's going to help you feel better. And then mo most importantly, I think is going to help you feel better is this pro proglandin E1, PG, prostaglandin. prostaglandin E1. And so it's sort of those three things that could give, you know, in early days, or even if it's not early days, but you're not feeling great, um, a really good shot at just kind of healing some of the damage that has been done over the years from drinking. And again, like I, um, I just trust Dr. Trinket inherently. And that's why I've asked him to do this and put, put together this website where you can order these things from him or equally, if you wanted to just, you know, go in and find a naturopath locally and talk about this stuff, I'm sure that they would be happy to order it. But if you wanted to sort of dive more into your own tests and results, I know for me, I'm, you know, starting to do blood tests every few years and just see kind of where I'm at and what I want to work on nutritionally. It's, it's been amazing in my well-being in and, you know, kind of mental clarity, the brain fog is gone. I have lots of energy. I feel quite joyful on a regular basis. I attribute all of this to that first domino of making the choice to get rid of alcohol in my life. Because guess what? Once you do that, there's no crutch. And if you're not feeling great one day, you have to start to look for the underlying reasons, no matter whether they're emotional or they're physical. And for me, there was a lot of both. And doing that you know, doing the work, understanding your body leads you into this pathway, into this way of just a whole entirely different way of living, which is so beautiful. So, um, but if you did want to do some of those sorts of things like testing and whatnot, I believe you would do Skype consultations. Oh, absolutely. So, um, we'll put Dr. Trinka's information in the show notes, but also could you just I guess, give all the information about where people could find the supplements sure. and where people could find you to do more of a deep dive should they want to couple of things. Um, one is um, I have a business called the iBrain Connection or just iBrainConnection.com and because I'm also a doctor of optometry and in the last three years I've realized that there is an incredible way that your eyes perceive the environment and that interfaces with your brain 
that most optometrists, most doctors of optometry don't address. They don't address the peripheral retina or the central vision's interaction with the peripheral retina, and those have profound effects on your brain. Simil at the very same time, you've got all of these chemicals in your body that are going up to the brain. So I've tried to marry the whole visual perception and basic physiology and advanced physiology, hormones, digestion, detoxification, into one um, cohesive business. And um, so that's why it's called the eye brain connection. So there's a, um, there's a link on the, um, on the, the homepage for people who listen to this podcast. And if they go on there, there's instructions. There's a little bit of things that I um, repeat of some of the things that I said here. And also there's instructions on how to go ahead and get some of these supplements. Um, I have one last thing to say that you, that you hit on Annie, that was just so important. And that is, um, the emotional part of this whole choice. And I think, um, it, it, what I've seen in the studies that I've done is that depression pays a huge part in this. And in, in my look at this, I came up with seven things and I'm not going to go into them all. I'm just going to list them. Um, seven things that have to be looked at for the person that really wants to be well relative to post um, drinking you know to when they've made that decision like this is not part of my life anymore i really think it's super important to address these things and here they are you i've already talked about three of them hypoglycemia um, gamma linoleic acid and pge1 um, and neurotransmitters via um, glutamine. Um, but you can take other things like tyrosine for dopamine and tryptophan for serotonin, the feel good drug. There's some, there's some issues around doing all that. So you can't just take them and think I'm done. Um, but the other things that I really wanted to point out were that many people are subclinically hypothyroid. Subclinic meaning you, it's there and you don't know it. Um, and that definitely causes a depressive type of a state. Um, uh, many people, because they drink and it's a refined alcohol, they encourage the growth of a certain organism called candida in their gut. And so you have to address the candida. If you don't, it's really hard to, to move forward. Um, we talked about food sensitivities and allergies as a result of leaky gut. That's definitely a part of it. And then vitamin and um, mineral deficiencies are legion. They're they're super important. So all of these things play into the emotional part of healing yourself as you go from drinking a lot to not drinking. Um, and I just wanted to put that out there. And those are all things that um, somebody like me um, or me can help a person with um, if they so desire, if they're willing to do the work. And I think it's so important because... I know for me that I looked at depression in my life as because I was told many, many times that there was something chemically wrong with my brain and it was just what it was and I needed to take medication. And then lo and behold, I stopped drinking and about a year later, I started to feel significantly better, significantly different. And that was really the beginning of the journey. It was the journey where I thought, okay, now I can start to look at getting off the three antidepressants I was on. I was on Wellbutrin, Escitalopram, Xanax, and then I was also prescribed Ambien for sleeping when I was traveling internationally. So it was kind of this whole entire thing, none of which you're supposed to drink with, all of which I was drinking tons with. And once I cut out the alcohol, I started to feel side effects from those medicines that I hadn't felt before. And mostly because I was just like, everything I felt when I was drinking, I would numb immediately. So you become much more in tune with what your body is actually doing and how you're actually feeling emotionally and physically. And when you do that, you start to ask these questions about, because like Dr. Trinka said, what what is this life if we're not really feeling good? And so if we put the work into feeling good, it's amazing. And, and really for me, I have taken L-glutamine I have taken the blood sugar supplement. They're both amazing. The blood sugar supplement was nothing really moderated my mood more than that com combined with eating more protein. And I've taken um, mostly just Dr. Trinka's advice about what to eat and how to eat. And I've changed my diet drastically. And the impact that it has had has been, I mean, like I was saying at the beginning of the episode, it's, it's just been phenomenal. But it is, it's a journey and it takes you know, a real desire to 
not want a quick fix. I know I've talked before about this concept of raw bells of switches versus seeds. And this is another thing where we're all looking for that switch. We want to flip the light switch and we want our emotions to go away. We want to numb the feelings. We want to numb the pain. We want to feel part of something. We want to feel something in the moment. And that's just how our entire culture is wired. Whereas seeds, something like looking at your nutrition, doing a blood test, doing a deep dive into where you are and how to get to the next level. That's a seed. That's something that you plant and is going to grow and is going to like provide huge dividends in, in your future because someday you're going to be looking back and you're going to be like, wow, I don't even remember the last time I cried when I used to wake up every morning and have a good cry before going to work. <laughs> so, you know, if that's, if that's you, like, it's not normal and it's it's not a good healthy way to live and of course I always believe the first step is getting in control of alcohol because it's so detrimental in so many ways but then the next step is really saying okay well how can I support these reasons I was drinking anyway you know you're drinking because you had low GABA or because you're pro glass I can't say that word but because well, prostaglandins. <laughs> And so if you can address these things with supplements you know that entire journey becomes so much easier so is there anything else no, I, th I think you covered as much, and we covered as much as um, we can in this um, short period of time. Um, I just want to express my appreciation for you having me on so I can help people, because that's what makes me feel happy, is when I help people. Um, and so I appreciate it. Thank you, Annie. Well, I appreciate it. You've helped me so much, and I couldn't wait to get you in front of my readers, so thank you for having this, this happen. And um, again, we'll put all the links in the show notes, but it's ibrainconnection.com. That's where you can find Dr. Trinka. And any questions you have, uh, just let me know. Have a wonderful day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.